LeBron James had some things to say after the game. Because we still have games to play. You got to, you got to, until you stump me out, cut my head off, bury me 12 feet under, then I got a chance. So that's my confidence. You know, I hate losing. I feel like poop right now. But tomorrow is a new day, and I'm going to be prepared and ready for, for the Clippers on Thursday. But that's just that's my mindset. That's just who I am. The Lakers are 0-3 since the All-Star break. 16 and, uh, sorry, 6-15 and 15 over their last 21. 6-15, and 15, that ain't good. They're on pace for just 36 wins this season, which would be the fewest by a LeBron James team since his rookie year. Okay. Matt Barnes bringing all the smoke and insider Brian Windhorst with me. What's up, guys? Matt, your takeaway from the latest Lakers loss. Uh, ugly. This is the, the narrative has changed so much during this season, Max. This team went from a title hopeful, odds on favor, to are they going to make the playoffs? Uh, normally, anytime you have LeBron on your roster, you're going to have a chance. And I still believe in this team. But I think what they did in the bubble in 2020, people don't really understand how hard it is. They've been putting a new team together every single year since LeBron has been there. And that is hard to do. They struck lightning in a bottle being able to win a championship in the uh, in the bubble. But that is hard to do. And you're starting to see that. Everyone wants to say this is an experienced team. This is just an older team that's built for the playoffs. So if they're able to make the playoffs, I think, you know, who knows if they'll win a championship, but I think we'll see better basketball because they have more time in between. It's about adjustments, and they have days off. Brian, your take on the situation in L.A.? Yeah, so they don't really have a choice, Max, because they don't have their draft pick this year under any circumstance. So it's not like a year ago Toronto was in this situation. They were not as good as they thought, and they kind of shut down and ended up striking lottery luck. The Lakers don't have that option. And the second thing is, you know, like LeBron said, they do have the opportunity to catch some lightning in a bottle. There is some relevance to the fact that Anthony Davis, a top 15 player, is going to hopefully rejoin them within the month or so. And so that's what they're playing for. But I will say that, you know, LeBron did lay the groundwork before the All-Star break that his knee is going to be bothering him the rest of the season. So I've been listening very closely, and this was the most definitive statement that he's made um, that he doesn't intend to shut things down. Now, we'll see. There's still, uh, you know, a month and a half left. But I think it's interesting that there's two things that LeBron cares about deeply. One is winning championships. Number two is history. And so while the championship may not come this year, LeBron still does have something to play for. He's chasing Carl Malone. He should be able to catch him by the end of the season for number two, setting the stage in all-time scoring, setting the stage to, to, to catch Kareem Abdul-Jabbar next year. So LeBron will have motivation to play for that, and while he wouldn't admit that, it does matter. Matt, I remember, and I believe this was the year after you left the team, I was in L.A. doing radio and uh, on the Lakers station, and they traded for Steve Nash and Dwight Howard, and that was the last, and you were on the Clippers at that point, right? That was the, you had just been on the Pau Gasol, yeah. Andrew Bynum team. And they got rid of too mm -hmm. many of the Matt Barneses on the previous iteration of the team, and they, you know, it was Dwight and Nash and all the shiny names, and this, to me, looks like the biggest underachieving team star-studded Lakers team since that one, right? But in that one, Kobe Bryant's kind of staged a behind-the-scenes mutiny. He was like, I'm not running this D'Antoni offense. I'm going to will us to the playoffs. He did. He was played himself 40-plus minutes a game, and he wound up tearing his Achilles, and he was never... Like, that was basically the end of his career, right, as Kobe Bryant until that 60-point performance last night of his career. So what about the fact... You know, Brian brings it up. Wendy brings it up. You, like, at what cost do you try to squeak into the playoffs or the play-in and not win a playoff series, most likely? You're going to play a 37-year-old with all these miles a million minutes a game? At what point does it get dangerous, Matt? Uh, this is going to be a tough call in a tough situation. Like Brian said, they don't have – they can't tank or, or, or pack it in because they really have nothing to pack it in for. So it is going to be a tough call. And, and, again, I think all the things that Brian mentioned, although they're not discussed – LeBron is very aware of what's going on. His level of play hasn't really dipped, to be honest with you. He's still playing at a great level. The question has arisen in the last few weeks, although LeBron is a great player, can he still carry a team? That's a big question. I think they were hoping that Anthony Davis, obviously, was going to be the one that was going to do a lot of heavy lifting and allow LeBron to really shine in the playoffs. AD has been in and out the whole season. So it's going to be interesting down the stretch to see how this team plays it.
Yeah, they never got enough shooting on the team. AD's not there for the defense, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Another team out west that's struggling is the Golden State Warriors. They lost to the T-Wolves last night, are now just a half game ahead of the Grizzlies for the second seed in the West. Wendy, what's your read on what's going on with Golden State? Yeah, they got three problems. Number one, Draymond Green is injured, and we still don't have a good timetable when he's coming back, which isn't a surprise because it's a back injury. Number two, they're just weak at the big man spot. Um, you know, Carl Anthony Towns did a number on them last night, especially when they had to take Kevon Looney off the court. And number three, their, start, their shooters are in a slump. You go back and look since, since February 1st when they have a losing record, look at these shooting percentages. Jordan Poole, a guy who was absolutely spectacular uh, while Clay Thompson was, re was rehabbing earlier this year, since he's gone to the bench roll, can't hit a shot. You put those three things together in a, in a, in a, in a conference where you expect to get it every single night, uh, you're, you're going to lose some games. That's what's happening. Wendy, I know Poole is a, like a good, really good free throw shooter, and that usually indicates like consistency shooting the three or shooting from distance. But I thought when they put this team together last year, other than Steph, every other player on the team, there was not one other plus shooter at any position. You know, like Wiggins had a great shooting, but, but his career doesn't tell you he's a plus shooter for a two, right? Draymond can't shoot from the outside. He's not a plus shooter for a four. They don't have the shooting, right? I mean, even Paul is not a great shooter until last year. They, they all kind well, of they shot did. above their heads last year. Well, but Poole was shooting the ball great early in this season. And, um, you know, they did get Clay Thompson back, and he's been That's big. okay. It's just that... Paul, you know, frankly, Steph has not shot the belt well all year. This is arguably his worst shooting season in like 10 years. And Jordan Poole, you thought when you moved him to the second unit, he would be able to sort of, you know, control games a little bit. His usage rate, which is, you know, how many, you know, much he uses and he's used in the offense, gets shut, has been actually lower. So just there, everything isn't coming together for them right now. Matt, what's your level of concern for Golden State at this moment? My concern is Draymond Green's health, first and foremost. Uh, this team doesn't stand a chance in the playoffs without him. With a healthy him and clay and rhythm, this team can win a championship. I don't think people understand what kind of security blanket he is on the defensive end, what they've been struggling in, and how he's able to run the offense. If you look at this team when they're really rolling, Draymond Green has the ball in his hands, making a lot of the big decisions to get uh, Steph open, in the pass to get Clay open, and then getting these role players going as well. So I think Draymond Green's numbers are very deceiving as far as how important he is for this team's success. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, the irreducible two of the Golden State Warriors, as we know them, that modernized, revolutionized offense, are Steph and Dre, actually. His pick-and-roll partner, his do-everything point forward, small ball center, everything guy, 100%. That's Matt Barnes and Brian Windhorst, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Coming up, what's the best team for Jimmy G next year? And why is it the Steelers? I'll continue to make the case.